What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel for the afternoon stream. I decided to... I have the first episode of The Council downloaded on my PlayStation and I need to play it and decide whether I like it enough to buy the other four episodes or not. If you guys have been waiting for a few minutes, I'm, my apologies. It takes a few extra minutes for me to get set up whenever I'm starting a new game. Um... But yeah, watch through it with me, and if it's a game you want to see more of, don't forget to smash the like button so I know, and I will definitely buy the other episodes. I really have no idea what this game's about. I'm under the impression that it's like a murder mystery type game, which isn't really my forte, but I was kind of in the mood to play something a little different. And the artwork kind of reminded me of Monkey Island a little bit, and I love those games, so... If you like Telltale games, I have a feeling you're going to like this game. If you don't, you might not. And I'm sorry about that. But, um, let's jump in and see what it's about. Read letters from or address to other guests to learn more about their motivations and personality. France. December 10th, 1792. I'm gonna try not to talk a whole lot because it's kind of an immersive story. Stop! You're not getting anywhere with this Von Borschert. You know, I kind of get the same feeling, my dear Sarah. Listen. Nothing. Not a sound. No one's coming to save you. Huh. That's what you think. The Golden Order knows exactly where we are. <laughs> By the time your ridiculous secret society turns up, I'll be long gone. As for you, nothing will remain of your body. If you touch a single hair of my mother's head, I'll skin you alive. You know, Louis, I have no intention of beating your dear mother. There are more persuasive ways of making you talk. You've stolen something from me that I intend to get back. Where have you hidden it? Von Borschert, you can't sell that book on the black market anymore. This is finished. We know you're planning on selling at one of Lord Mortimer's parties. All right? Just tell us who the buyer is and we can make a deal. You've no idea of the trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Oh, but you will tell me where it's hidden. I can promise you that. Oh, stop annoying our host, Louis. Son. Didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Just a few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that damn motto of yours always remain rational and open i got it i've opened our shackles draw him over here i'll take care of him bob barchard bob barchard mm -hmm. listen let's make a deal i'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free oh what are you playing at don't worry mother you want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the last time. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. I'll trust you. Please, her. be my guest, Mother. Mm. Ah. Shoot him. Well 
done, Louis. You Sorry. reacted perfectly. Sorry, I'm on PlayStation. How do you feel, so mother? Blurs out Couldn't be better. He's alive, so I can question him after we get back. Pity he's just a middleman. Hmm. Means I haven't finished with this case. Oh, I had a feeling you'd be running off on one of your adventures again, mother. You know what? I'm warning you. This time, I'm coming with you. No. Even though you impress me more and more, I have to do this on my own. Mother, you're no spring chicken anymore. Come on, let's go home. And don't forget to send our men to tend to Von Borchardt. One month later, January 20th, 1793. Lord Mortimer's Island, off the coast of England. Done, mother. You just had to pick up Bob Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world renowned receptions of this Lord Mortimer. And now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island, which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. Well, I'm sure I'll find you once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island, searching for some long-lost mystical object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is think about it. what one may be able to imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Hall. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh no, we have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Hall, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you good, sir. What brings you here? Lord Mortimer asked me to join him. We have some business to take care of. Oh, how mysterious. You adapt quickly, my son. You get along here like a fish in water. Would you believe that we are all here hoping to solve our personal issues? You'll see. Right. I doubt that you came here to look for your mother, your eminence. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man. ...of simply one day setting foot on this island. And only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. And you, Duchess? You seem to be quite accustomed to things here. Am I right? I do not think that one can ever get accustomed to what Lord Mortimer prepares for his guests. But you are right. This is not the first time I've been on this wharf. If you've come back again, I imagine you must find it to be of some interest. Here, everything is possible if you make the right choices. It really is up to you whether you leave better off or not. Please excuse me if you find me overly curious, young man. I did not mean to cause you any embarrassment. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A cardinal? A Duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. <laughs> are you right? The hell? I'm having a 
some cheese here? Mother? Oh shit, your hand! So? Okay, it's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah, no one's going to find it. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm sure. Right. Just one thing left to do. No, Mother, no, don't, don't! What? Have you lost your mind? There is no other way. If you... if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But... I trusted you. No, Sarah! Don't! No! No! <gasps> you can run if you want to, Sarah. But you will pay me. What was that? You. Uh, Louis, are you all right? What's going on? They must have sprung a leak. Here, take this. I'm sorry. Keep it. Are you better? I'm fine. Don't worry. It's getting late. Why don't why don't you go on ahead and I'll catch up with you, okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sure yes. Fine. I definitely have to find mother quickly. Am I going crazy or, or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me for God's sake? Okay, I absolutely Emily need to find your mother. The Duchess. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since? A diplomat, the diplomat shines in society, a talented speaker, he avoids faux pas, and he can convince those with whom he is talking without offending them. Politics is his field of predilection. The occultist is a master of deception. Convinced of the important of no importance of knowledge, he has acquired extensive expertise in science and the arts. Using others to achieve his own ends does not bother him. Detective. The detective excels in investigation. He is trained to notice every detail in his surroundings as well as in people he questions. A hands-on man, he does not shy away from the direct approach. Choosing a class defines your basic skills. The other skills will still be available, but unlocking them will be more expensive. Um, I want to be an occultist, but I'm trying to think what would be the most beneficial for the game. Probably detective. Questioning, vigilance, psychology, agility, and logic. Manipulation, occultism, erudition, sciences. Politics, etiquette, linguistics, conviction, diversion. I think I'm going to be an occultist. Three available points. Occultist unlock the erudition, occultism, subterfuges, science, and manipulation skills. You now have seven effort points to use your skills. Your past granted you one skill point in manipulation. Your past granted you one skill point in psychology. Um. 
I wanted to learn psychology anyway. All right. Five points to level two. Three people's behavior. And then this is the other one. I have been involved in all sorts of unsolved cases. Have you ever heard of the Abbey of Hexham? Uh, vaguely. An ingenious scam involving mass manipulation on a scale never seen before. Hmm. There was a cavern under the Abbey, wasn't there? Exactly. The wind would blow in through spouts, creating a, a terrifying howling sound. So, to stop the howling, the priests called for offerings from the peasants. And if they brought enough money, I'm guessing the priests stopped the howling. A perfect trick to fool simple souls. Admit it, Duchess. That story kept you in suspense, didn't it? Yes, it did. I'm delighted to find out that you were the young and brilliant French investigator. For someone who only remembers the case vaguely, your memories are very clear. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me, I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? Please excuse me, madam. I'm sure we've met before, but I don't remember where. Hmm. I appreciate your honesty, even if it's not very flattering for me. I imagine that with your beauty, madam, it's the first time a man hasn't remembered your face. Well, I must say, you make up for yourself rather elegantly. Please stop torturing me. I'm completely at your mercy. Where have we met? Four years ago, in London? No. Sorry, I, I don't remember. In the office of William Pitt. Remember? No? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Emily, but I really don't remember you. Let's drop it, Louis. It doesn't matter. Right, time to go to the manor. Your skills allow you to discover hidden details. Select the object that is most suggestive of the situation in order to discover them. Opportunities do not consume effort points. To access the skill required for the situation, you just need to have unlocked it. I ask her a question, she answers with another. Is she playing with me? Personality. Each person you meet on the island has their own personality, which makes them vulnerable to certain skills and immune to others. Exploiting their personality is crucial to achieve your personal goals. Skills used against immunities will not succeed and leave you exhausted. Meanwhile, exploited vulnerabilities will give you one effort point back. Review immunities and vulnerabilities in the journal tab in the menu. Emily, please excuse my... Hold on. She's immune to logic. Emily Hillsborough is an English duchess close to the English crown. Very discreet about her origins, Emily only came onto the political scene after her wedding, but some qualified as a marriage of interest to an old English aristocrat on the decline. Libertarian, modern, but discreet, she has taken it upon herself to establish close ties with her peers. In a few years, she has become the favorite diplomat of the Queen, which is what probably prompted her Prime Minister, William Pitt, to take her as a private secretary, thus provoking much suspicion and jealousy. As a regular visitor, Emily accepted Sir Gregory Holmes' invitation to come to Lord Mortimer's Island because, for nothing in the world, would she miss one of these famed receptions. Who's this? That's me. The only son of Sarah, Louis Mora de Roche, is a young Parisian aristocrat. Ever since he was a young child, Louis moved in his mother's circles, and so it was natural that on his 14th birthday he entered the Golden Order, the secret society headed by Sarah. Precocious, Louis progressed quickly at her side. Despite the daily treatment his mother prescribed for his chronic migraines, he climbed the ladder until he was able to assist his mother in occult cases 
for which he was particularly talented. As time went by, he became shaped in the image that his mother had held for him. Everything pointed to, one day, young Louis becoming the head of the Golden Order. I haven't discovered his vulnerabilities or anything yet. His eminence, the Cardinal Gypsy Piaggi, is a legate of Pope Pius VI. A distinguished speaker, he worked throughout his career to serve the principles of the Roman Catholic Church. A man of science and amateur philosopher, he quickly caught the ear of the Pope who discreetly named him Cardinal in Pector. He was thus able to use this relationship of trust to help Pius VI in his difficult mission of guiding the faithful. Invited by Sir Gregory home, he is delighted to meet his old friend Mortimer in order to represent the interests of the Holy See. Sarah Faustine de Roche is a rich French aristocrat. Thirty-four years ago, Sarah took over one of the most important secret societies, the Golden Order. A woman of strong will, Sarah endeavored to infiltrate the highest circles of society. Politics, trade transactions, secrets of state, or paranormal spheres, the Order had an eye over everything. One of the biggest areas of growth that Sarah brought to the Order was the development of its branches in America, Europe, and Central Africa. Not to mention the expansion of her occult section, which she took care of personally. Since he was just a boy, Sarah has been preparing her son, Louis, to become the new face of the Golden Order. Okay, so she's immune to logic. You still haven't answered about my mother. Do you know her? You'll see, Louis. Everybody here knows Sarah de Richet. I don't know where we're going like this, Emily. But you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart. Talents. You obtain talents when carrying out certain actions. Remember to review their unlock conditions and effects as they offer very interesting improvements. Review all talents in the dedicated tab in the menu. Mm -hmm. Good evening, sir. May I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, delighted to welcome you among us, sir. What's that with the diamonds you must be in the Sarah bottom de Richet, left? Anybody son? know? I must tell you we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. What can you tell me about the disappearance of my mother? Two weeks have passed since her mother went missing. All the staff here have since been busy searching every nook and cranny of the island. But, sir, may rest assured, we shouldn't be long in finding her. And just what have you found so far? It would seem that Sir's mother may be hiding on the island, and regularly changing her location. But no one seems to know why she would find this behavior necessary. What do you mean? On several occasions, we have found leftovers of food, a few of her things, or even traces of campsites. The reason why we are searching the wharf again is because lights were spotted there last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seemed to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps Sir's mother was here. Your skills give you access to unique choices and actions at the cost of effort points. The higher your skill level, the lower the cost is in effort points. Did anyone any see point. anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep, and no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to sir's mother. A handkerchief. The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials S.D.R. It's we the came one to the, the conclusion that they us. are the initials of sir's mother. I just like it. Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll in the war for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. Handkerchief. 
I'll take care of it. I can't pick the grade up. Pass one. me the handkerchief. But, but, sir, my orders were to give it to my master. Are you refusing to give me my own mother's personal belongings? Even though she was greatly looking forward to meeting your master, she's gone missing. And you seem incapable of finding her. Oh, but, sir, please. And to top it all off, you refuse to give me the handkerchief that she so often let me use? Do I deserve such little consideration in your eyes? Is that what you wish me to report to your master? No, certainly not, sir. Please forgive me, sir. I have been such an idiot. Here you are. You're giving my mom shit, man. It is indeed your handkerchief, mother. He must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? On one of her servants wear a mask. It is a recurring subject of conversation among the guests. No one knows the true reason. They're easily manipulated. Must be an incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away. Like a bar from an old gate. This miserable old bar has been broken fairly recently. The edges are still clean, and the tip is blackened. Without analysis to the contrary, I put my money on cannon powder. This might just come in handy. Yeah, if I need to beat a bitch. A sack of seeds. It's unopened. No one seems to have used any. Okay, so the little blue orbs is stuff I can interact with. Well, that's not one. Royal Jelly. Royal Jelly restores two effort points. You cannot carry more than five. Oh. No, that's not the diamond. This chest might belong to Duchess Hillsborough. Jelly restore two effort points. Okay. Dear Monsieur de Ruche, I am writing you to express my embarrassment regarding the situation in which I find myself. As you probably know, I had invited your mother, Sarah de Ruche. To join me on my island several weeks ago, we had projects in common regarding of your order. Regarding your order, her stay was going smoothly until yesterday, when your mother suddenly disappeared. I do not want to overworry you, but I would like you to join me as soon as possible, so we can shed some light on this mystery. Please accept, sir, the expression of my highest consideration. Yours sincerely, Lord William Mortimer, Marquis of Westfordshire. Archdoxes of Magic. Paracelsus, 1526, one of the several volumes of this Master of Alchemy, who dedicated his erudition and open mind to a better understanding of the world. He gave his name to the zinc symbol. Plus one skill point. And what?
this. I'll figure all these out eventually. Time given for opportunities is increased by 50%. Ending an opportunity successfully would now return one effort point to you. I can't really do anything with these traits. I can do in the menus right now. Some rope. Apparently, no one's touched for a good long time. So, this is kind of like Monkey Island. Let's see what's hidden inside. Let's look. Badly written, I, I can't make out the address. The address is 50 Bedford Square, London. Hmm, a letter written in an Oriental language. I have the slightest idea what it says. The address is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That reminds me, it's about time the order sent some envoys there. Probably a Dutchman. Samuel Ritter Dochoa. Mother, you test me even when you're not here. It's an anagram of Louis Moras de Riche. You wanted to write to me then. Let's see what's inside this letter. So. Dear Samuel, my stay on Lord Mortimer's Island is going wonderfully well. As I find myself in such charming company, I plan to stay a few more weeks. Would you be so kind as to send me a gift that I'd like to give to our old friend Manuel Godoy? I would be most grateful. I have been told that he's going to join us here soon. I would like to mark the occasion. Thank you in advance. Yours devotedly, Sarah Faustine de Richer. What is your game here, Mother? What are these strange turns of phrase? I've never heard you speak like that. What's going on here? That you write to me under a pen name. Okay. But here you go even further by trying to avoid raising any suspicions should anyone else read it. I wonder if this Godoy is the person you came looking for. Think! Godoy, Godoy, Manuel Godoy. Why does that name sound so familiar? I'm guessing he's a man of some importance. Spanish, I'd say. But, just can't put a face to him. Well, hope we meet to talk about it soon, Mother. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into this time, but I'll bet you've got a lot to tell me. None of which she wants to tell you. Let's see what's hidden inside. Let's look. Make sure I don't miss nothing. No. This envelope is meant for the Vatican. Apparently this letter is meant for Pope Pius VI, born Giovanni Brasci. I wonder which one of these people is influential enough to write to the Pope in person. An address in Cairo, Egypt. Mortimer communicates with the whole world, apparently. All right, where's 
it's just that one. Clearly, I'm not much for manual labor. Let's see if I can get it open another way. Ah, there we are. Screw it. Might as well learn lockpick, right? Hmm, this wharf is used as storage for a lot of barrels. Aha. Uh -huh. What have we here? It's cannon powder. Hmm. The powder's wet. Not surprising, given the dampness of the dock. It's unusable now. I don't know what the person who left this barrel like this had in mind, but it's a waste. case, but it's empty. I don't know if this has anything to do with you, Mother, but if it does, at least she's now you're armed. Holding on the Duchess. Just like in my vision. And none of it's telling me anything useful. Apparently, someone on this island has gone through a whole lot of trouble to arm themselves. I really must find you, dear Mother, and quickly, too. Like it's an island. Where could she be? How did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop? the conditions detail in the talents menu to unlock something. Those scenes clip too fast for me to read them. That's not oh, intimidating. Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, your eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Vice, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope, but I haven't seen her. If her own to mother me. had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Confrontations. During a confrontation, you have to go through several steps while being as persuasive as possible. Confrontations have consequences on the rest of the story, so don't hesitate to use your skills. Each confrontation displays an interface showing how much the person you are talking to is convinced. Well, thank you, my son. I bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. 
Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? What? Certainly, your eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, your eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, uh, if you only knew my son, I hold your mother in the highest of God. She has rendered great service to the church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. If only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is very commendable. But since we work together on a daily basis, it's, it's surely just an oversight. Most certainly. You said you work together. What do you do, exactly? If you know my mother, you will understand that I cannot answer you, Your Eminence. I'm sorry, but... Do not worry, my son. I perfectly understand, and I expected nothing less from you. Discretion and secrecy are both pillars of the organizations for which we work. You are the worthy son of Sarah. All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me, and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Uh, I hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Yes, I do. Listen, you have nothing to fear. I will give your letter to my mother the moment I find her. The moment you find her? You mean Sarah has gone missing? Shit. No shit. I shouldn't have said that. Let's not exaggerate your eminence. I have no other information at this time. It's probably nothing. Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God sure. that no one other than your mother would read it? Confrontation, last step. For the last step of a confrontation, you must convince the person you're take, talking to by giving a positive answer. If you give a bad answer, the step will repeat itself until either you give a right one or you have no blunders left. <laughs> That's what I'd like to say. I swear by the Almighty God to honor the promise that no one but my mother shall cast her gaze upon your letter. Good. Listen, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Ricci. Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the accursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priests' safe passage across the borders. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here, the letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. Oh, we're gonna look. Hidden elements. Many clues and items are hidden. Some of them will have an impact on your adventure, so do not hesitate to look for them. Um, walk around and look before we join the group.
Devil's Thorn. Devil's Thorn grants you the exalted state. You temporarily see the immunities and vulnerabilities affecting a dialogue choice in a conversation. You cannot carry more than five. A Devil's Thorn to be used to uncover the best disguised traits. Loth, I guess. Maybe I should introduce myself to the other guests first. All right, so there's nothing else in here yet. Oh, yeah, there is right here. Lives of the Noble Greeks and Romans by Plutarch. A biography of the great men. Open to Brutus's page. Caesar, stabbed by multiple blows at once, sees Brutus raise the dagger on him. Then, covering his head with his robe, he delivers himself to the arms of the conspirators. Nice family. Let's keep it. Might come in handy someday. <laughs> Manuscripts. Manuscripts allow you to educate yourself during the adventure. At the start of each quest, you can choose what to read and gain permanent skill points. Find your manuscripts by using the inventory tab in the menu. Push the center button to access your menu page. Yeah, okay. Parallel lives. Plutarch, 10th to 11th century. A series of biographies of illustrious men providing much information on their lives. Do I not have any points? And where does it show me my points? If I do. <laughs> I guess we'll figure all that out eventually. I thought my chimney was big, but this one is beyond belief. It's the least one can say. I've been longing for a warm fire for ages. Since I set foot on the island, I haven't ventured more than two yards away from it. Have you also just arrived? Oh, late morning, I'd say. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi? He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simple. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, uh -huh. Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. On a Louis preview, Morass I saw, I've Durisha. said to myself, he it looks is an like honor George to meet Washington. You. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you forgive my indiscretion? At the risk of disappointing you, we weren't conspiring in our corner, sir. His eminence was simply telling me that he knew my mother and how much he held her in high esteem. It so happens that Monsieur de Riche's mother is to join us. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. 
So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richer, so the trip and you've come out here to join for the whole world. For what reason, Beautiful. exactly? That's it. Uh... Like you, Mr. President, I'm here as a result of Lord Mortimer's invitation. Two members of the same family here. That is rare. You know what they say. You can pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards, and we'll take a moment to speak about her. Oh, wow. Good lord. Washington is wearing the emblem of the Grand Master of the Golden Order. It's the highest distinction of the Order in the United States. It puts him on par with my mother. He must really know his stuff when it comes to the occult. Good evening, my friend. I thought it was a Freemason oh, medallion. Oh, That's like... the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. Yeah, he can't be present this evening, looking. and he sends his deepest apologies. He's asked me here and he hasn't even turned up? Great start. When the time limit is over, an answer is automatically selected. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh, we shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, we'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this home. I saw him in my vision. Let's see what Washington has to say. Sir, if you don't mind, I shall stay here. Do exactly as you please, young man. Louis, thank you for staying. Just like you, when I arrived this morning, I found out that Sarah had gone missing. I know your mother well. Don't worry. Emily is from the English branch of the Golden Order. And President Washington is in fact the leader of the Order in the United States. I... I didn't know. Sorry to have made you wait, but I didn't want to speak in front of the others. You did well. Secrecy and discretion are the pillars of our organization. If I can help in any way at all, please don't hesitate to ask, my lad. And if you have any other questions, now's the time. <sighs> Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. Lord Mortimer is a remarkable man. He's wealthy, and is advisor to the very highly placed. Your mother is the head of the Order in France. It doesn't surprise me that he asked her to come. Lord Mortimer greatly contributed to financing my electoral campaign, for example. But I want this to be clear, without ever seeking to gain an advantage. And that is to his credit. Yes, you can trust him. He will do everything in his power to help you find Sarah. Mr. Washington, you seem to be very familiar with my mother. Where did you first meet her? I met Sarah during the War of Independence on American Guys, soil. I'm gonna turn off my she was introduced to me by a mutual acquaintance, and, I, and I must say that her sound advice prevented me from making some terrible mistakes. She may not be a soldier, but believe me, she deserves a statue as much as Lafayette does. <sighs> I didn't see that one coming. There's no doubt Mother has many secrets that are still hidden. Right. Would it be too much if I asked you a few more questions? Not at all. Go ahead. But I can't promise I'll remember everything. May I ask, when you saw each other, what did you talk about? My mother has always been fascinated by strange powers. Did she talk to you about anything like that? Yes. 
Her facility for discerning truths from rumor served me well. Such as preventing massacres, like the one at Salem, from happening again. Or convincing people that horsemen cannot ride around without heads. <laughs> what was it that she used to say now? Keep an open and logical mind? Yes, that's it. Thank you, sir. I was hoping to speak with Lord Mortimer. At least now I have some information, thanks to you. I repeat, Lord Mortimer is a man of his word. You won't be disappointed. And I am persuaded that your mother's research is his main concern. I wonder if Mother is still on the island. Could she not have taken a boat and left? I don't see how. No vessel can moor closer than 200 yards. Not to mention the permanent presence of staff and servants. There is one strange thing, I grant you. This island is barely the size of Delaware, and despite that, no one has been able to locate your mother. So my mother still must be on the island. Fun fact. Don't worry, Louis. I'm sure I live nothing in bad has happened to her. Yes, I, it's I very hope small. It takes about an hour and a half to drive through north to south and about an hour east to west. Careful, Not during beach traffic back. season. Well, I am impressed with all this splendor. But don't spend too much time with Mr. Washington, my dear, or you'll lose your pretty accent. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be intrigued by that statue. Absolutely. It is remarkable. Lord Mortimer is fond of atypical works of art. I won't disguise the fact that I find it all a little megalomaniacal. But I must say, he does have some outstanding pieces. Sir Holm, who was that young lady with you? Elizabeth Adams, Mr. President. She would have liked to have stayed with us, but the poor thing is exhausted. Elizabeth Adams? Just mentioning Elizabeth totally changed Washington's attitude. Looks like he just saw a ghost. Miss Adams is here to rest. You have perhaps already come across her in the corridors. She arrived a few days ago. I perceived her, but we weren't introduced. Rest assured, she is not here for the same reasons as yourselves. Consequently, I'm counting on your indulgence. On that note, it's very late. You must be exhausted. The servant will accompany you to your room. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, your eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. Where is my room? Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Jacques Perru.
Monsieur Johann von Wulner. George Washington. Monsignor, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Huh, that's me. Right. So what shall I do with this letter? It might be about my mother's disappearance. But if I open it, I'll be betraying Biagi's trust. What should I do? Damn, can't wait to open it, but I gave my word to Piaggi, so... Too bad. I'll wait until I hand it to Mother. Wow, nice room. Mortimer sure doesn't do things halfway. Carmelite water. Carmelite water gives you the focus state. Your next skill use will cost no effort. You cannot carry more than five. Saint Jerome and the Angel. Yet again, art with political undertones with an image of a saint hearing voices. Saturn devouring his son. Again? I saw the same theme in the hall. I wouldn't like to be his son. Saint Francis of Assisi in ecstasy. Before superior voices. It always amuses me to see how art gets used for propaganda purposes. The conversion of Saint Paul by Caravaggio. It's incredible. It doesn't look like a copy, but I was sure the original was in Rome. elixir. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very jolly.
sleeping like a king, son. Your turn? The servants are not very efficient. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of Durache's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come. Take a seat, my friend. So, like... 
can they not see me? I'm confused right now. A little nighttime stroll, Mr. President. There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valeria. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir. I don't know what that was about. Oh, did I force myself into that dream state? I'm coming! Dear Monsieur de Richet, Please excuse me, but I am unable to join you at present. However, rest assured that we are doing all we can to resolve the case that concerns us. By the way, in close. Is something wrong? I'm going to need your help. Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? Elizabeth Adams. Home introduced her to us. Yes. Well, she is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens! I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room. And perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need ten minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. Count on me, sir. Thank you, my friend. Keep Elizabeth downstairs as long as possible. She must not return to her room. Trust me. According to Washington, Lady Adams is in the small salon. I better hurry. Louis, you're straying from your objective. My son. Oh, you are a godsend. What's the matter, Your Eminence? I believe a Miss Adams may be in danger. What do you mean? Do you hear that? She is being manhandled in this small salon. By whom? I don't know exactly. Uh, a thug. A Frenchman, it seems. By the cap of his cloth, I'd say he's a member of the French Revolutionary government. 
You should do something, my son. Come on, this guy's a cardinal? Weren't you about to enter the room, your eminence? Oh, no, 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 no. I was just uh, passing by. But since I do happen to be here, shall we go in together now? Uh, I'd rather go and find help. It's safer. Well, let's see. It's always the same ones who get dumped in it. Thank you, my son. May God watch over you. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Forget multiple paths. There are multiple paths to reach your objective. It may be a good idea to think twice before embarking on the first path you come to. Me, sir. If we were in France, I'd have sent you to the guillotine for what you just said. Please, just let me go back to my room. Hey, you! Stay out of it! This is none of your business! I'm gonna teach this little slut how to behave! What the hell is going on? Huh? I don't think you know who I am! Stop! I beg you! I, I didn't mean to! Don't hit me, please, sir! Shit! Uh, if I step in, Adams might just run back uh, to the room. And if I do nothing, yes, Washington will have enough time to search, but this girl's uh, gonna suffer. Damn it! What should I do? Let her go! Huh? Stay out of it, boy! Shit. What are you playing at? I told you to mind your own business, boy! If you think you can side with this whore and then just walk away, you're out of your mind. Give me one good reason not to knock you down. You're not back in your slum now. You're in Lord Mortimer's home. I suggest you think carefully about what you're going to do. Don't think you're getting away with it that easily. I'm sick of all these toffs. If we were in Paris, I'd send you all to the guillotine. And on top of it all, a woman telling me how I ought to behave? I won't stand for it. Oh, okay, okay, wait a minute. What? Don't tell me you're gonna defend these harlots. I believe in man. From speech comes dialogue. From dialogue, peace is born. And from peace, great destinies flourish. What the fuck are you talking about? I get the feeling you're trying to put one over on me. If that's the case, you're making a big mistake. Sorry about that. Look, there's no point in us aggravating each other. Let's both just go our separate ways. Don't move. We're not done yet. You wanted to be the knight in shining armor and save the damsel in distress. Let's see how brave you are. Disconcerted. Someone threw you off balance. The cost of effort points increases when using your skills. Use a golden elixir to cure yourself. Think about it. You know your head will roll tomorrow if you shoot. Wanna bet? Sure do. I'm not in the habit of beating Lord Mortimer's guest in his own salon. You got off easy this time, but don't try it again. The brooch Elizabeth was wearing. Huh. She was so frightened, she was unaware that she'd lost it. Yeah, well, it didn't seem to do her much good. Lady Adams must have locked it behind her when she fled.
Well, did you get time to search your room? Louis, I only needed ten minutes. Imagine the scandal if she had found me. What would you have done in my shoes? She was in the middle of an argument with some angry guy. Ten minutes? I didn't ask for the moon. Nonetheless, you found what you were looking for, didn't you? Not everything, but yes. Elizabeth is definitely the daughter of John Adams. We need more information. You can always go back. It's too late now. Bazant. Duke Manuel Godoy. Your Eminence, what are you doing here? I was worried about you, my son. Uh, how did it go with Miss Adams? Don't worry about that anymore, Your Eminence. I had to step in, but everything's under control. <laughs> what an adventure, my son. <laughs> I am relieved to hear it. You acted as a good Christian. In these troubled times, we need more men of your caliber. It's nothing, Your Eminence. I did what I had to do. Well, you did the opposite. Good. Well, thanks for the news. My son, I have another problem. I wanted to speak to you about something important. Do you still have my letter on you? The one I gave you in the hall? Why do you ask? I have a name to add to it. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't open it. Here it is. Thank you, my son. Ah, I see that it's still sealed. I was right to put my trust in you, Louise. Now give me one second, please. I can't imagine what would have happened if I hadn't added this name to the list. Please, be sure to give this letter to Sarah the moment you see her. If you I can count her. on it. Have a good night. I think you bastards conspired to kill her. I trust no one. his room. Louis, you're straying from your objective. Louis, you're straying from your objective. So where is my room? Monseigneur, his eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Huh, that's me. Exhausted. I better go to bed. No, I'll no. search my room tomorrow. If Mother stayed here right before me. You never know. And Mortimer had better show up. I think that was Mortimer playing chess.
I kind of like it so far. I wasn't sure I would. vision yesterday I saw that mother had this room before me I better search the room who knows maybe she left me something behind jelly but my inventory is full. The torture of Ixion, condemned by the gods to lose his mind because of his arrogance. I'll stay in my room. Dear Monsieur de Richet, please excuse me. I already read that. I haven't even had time to unpack my cases. Writing material. Writing I material. I can't investigate it. It won't let me. The incredulity of St. Thomas. Why is Caravaggio representing St. Thomas putting his finger in the wound? Thomas looks on, but doesn't touch. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Look, markings on the floor. The uh, door opens. Just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. Oh, this bookcase is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way around. It is a secret passage. A voyage around the world. The travel log of the explorer, Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order. Barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. Can't do that either. Oh, I'm not far from solving the puzzle. I must keep searching. Look, markings on the floor. Uh, just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. Yeah, me too. There's a circle around the lock here. Must be the trunk Mortimer was talking about. The key should open it. Okay. 
Okay. There's a note. Effects of Sœur de Richie to be given to her son, Louis. I should probably take it. Amber fragments. You just found an amber fragment. Each time you pick up four of them, you increase your maximum effort points by one. Review them in the inventory tab in the menu. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. A what? Okay. Okay. All right. I've retrieved everything. So. Is that timered? Like I can only use that for so long? Or does it stay with me until I use it? Priest robe, crosses, must be Piaggi's room. Yeah. Here's something will undermine my botanist appreciation for the local climate. Hmm. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She must have used the writing materials. What if she used lemon juice instead? An old trick used to hide messages. Hmm. A message using invisible ink. I bet she used a lemon to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? The message is illegible. I have to keep searching. Uh, what do you use to reveal invisible ink? I forget. I used to know. Ash, maybe? Or like pencil. That's the value of the ash. Apart from getting the book dirty, I can't see any use for this. serious mess here. It's no good. It might have worked if the writing had left marks in the paper, but no. Well. It's only traces of lemon. Luckily, I've only put ash on part of the message. Apparently that wasn't the right solution. Hmm. Nothing here. I wouldn't mind a nice, strong coffee, though. There. Speaking of which, I'm gonna take a sip. message is written in lemon juice, the flame will reveal it. Mm. Did he really just stick that in his pocket? 
Wow, it's burning. He's gonna pull it out of his pocket on fire, too. Aha! It's working! The heat reveals the message. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, could be anywhere. Damn! The message continues, but thanks to me, the rest of the text is unreadable. Great. I hope it wasn't a unique addition her mother's gonna kill me. Now I'd better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. I'm still figuring out how all this works. You gain one skill point in etiquette. You gain one skill point in occultism. You found the clues your mother left. I need to take some time and learn more about these too. Go to the red salon on the first floor. I thought my door was over there. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. Yes, we will. We're gonna go be nosy. Uh, wrong way. I think it's this way. Which button was the... Um, let's do this one. Intoxicated. You have used four consumable items during a single quest or consumed a noxious element. Dialogue timer is no longer visible. Okay, so I should only use so many of these at a time. Might be better to take a different stairway. Oh, come on. That must be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my vision. He wants me to go in these rooms now. The Prince by Machiavelli. Perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm, that might come in handy. Oh, this is Napoleon's room. Uh, I have enough points to do that. My dearest son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Powerly continues to steer our motherland, Corsica, toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable 
to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us soon. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. Your loving mother, Maria Letizia Bonaparte. A bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. Yeah, I already know I'm in Napoleon's rooms. I don't want to see the paintings. Coin. It's a beautiful weapon. A lovely damask blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. French actor Talma is Nero and Britannicus. But a fragment of amber. Nice. Person Gatterick's throat. Golden elixir. Hmm. I'll keep it for later. Person Gatterick throws down his arms at the feet of Julius Caesar by Royer. Two great army chiefs. My dear Napoleon, as previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join us in January on my island to participate in the high society meeting organized for the occasion. We shall be able to continue our discussion about our project for a new order for France. I have a proposition to make to you concerning your wish to put a strong leader at the head of France. I trust you to be discreet as to your coming. See you soon. Lord William Mortimer. Okay, so that was his invitation here. Ah, uh, there's not really much to learn in here. But I can tell. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault, too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holmes. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. You didn't happen to lose this, did you? Where did you find it? In the small salon. It's the only reminder I have of my beloved sister. I thought that swine stole it from me. You're her son. Sarah de Richet's son. Yes, why? Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? My mother came here to do business with Lord Mortimer, but she seems to have gone missing, so I'm here to find her. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you? Oh, I wouldn't say nursed, no. I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. Look, I've... I've got to go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds?
Elizabeth. Conf Fighting in me might ease your burden. Let me relieve you of some of your suffering. Relieve me? Do you even hear yourself? Do you really think that by confiding in my torturer's son, I will be healed as yeah, if by magic? That it will bring my smile back or let me sleep at night? Look, you don't seem like a bad person. And I'm sorry you have to find out your mother's true colors like this. But I'm not going to pity you. Everybody has their cross to bear. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Since you insist... I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? No. He went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fits stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to... separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her... experiments... to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but... I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons. Even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. Until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's come here for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. Mother's a little sadistic. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. Mm. Oh, well. Uh. I would like to speak about your master, Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything else that sir would like to know? What can you tell me about the guests? Do excuse me, sir, but I am bound by discretion to say nothing about Lord Mortimer's guests, sir. Perhaps sir would like to know something else? As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? Uh, 
You wouldn't have a little golden elixir I could use, would you? Oh, unfortunately, sir, I have orders not to give any of that medicine to any of Lord Mortimer's guests. Some guests are here to follow a very strict treatment. Mixing or combining certain substances would be dangerous for sir. My good fellow, would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone. So this is all stuff you can talk him into giving you later? Oh, I still haven't quite recovered after that boat crossing. Would you happen to have any Devil's Thorn by any chance? I, I am sorry, sir, but the Devil's Thorn may be just a plant, but it is also a powerful psychotropic drug that causes undesirable diuretic effects. I would advise against, sir, taking any. What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther, by Goethe, sir, and I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend, sir, a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. Hang on, but it's mine. Beg pardon, sir? It's my book. I'm telling you, it's my book. With all due respect, sir, I hope sir will understand that I have doubts. You see, I found it in Lord Mortimer's library. Huh. There you are, then. I am quite put out, sir. I don't know what to say. In that case, I suggest you say nothing and hand it over. But I... Now. But, sir, I... Very well, sir. Here you are. May sir take good care of it. It is damaged. And you've damaged it as well? Well, bravo. Bravo. No, no, I didn't do anything. It wasn't me, sir. Say pardon. Pardon me, sir. Very good. There were some other things I wanted to go over with you. <laughs> I'm straight bitched him down. I've asked him everything else. So what did we just take? The Prince. Political essay intended for Florentine nobility, famous for its cynical perspective on the exercise of power, plus one skill point manipulation. Go to the Red Salon. Oh, that's where she was before, right? Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not so be joining looking. us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing it? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Pardon? Ah. 
Thank you again for the wine, your eminence. I don't understand. It is served no, every know. day at the king's table. I am delighted to be here. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. Surprisingly, you know Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason, and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. Please. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Exactly. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. <laughs> Such complexity. Long. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh -huh. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small <laughs> effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. Mm. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. <laughs> My lord, I only know the prestige of your name. Might I have the honor of getting to know you a little better? You are Monsieur uh -huh. Louis Moras de Richet. De Richet. De Richet. A name with a nobiliary particle. Are you descended from a noble line? <laughs> yes, I heard the news. What a story. The presence of a particle does not necessarily mean a person belongs to the nobility, nor does it prevent the observance of the rules of etiquette, Monsieur von Bonnell. My friend. <laughs> Have you any information on this Napoleon? <laughs> Show us your Lord Mortimer has invited Napoleon along to negotiate an important commercial venture. Right Nothing strange about that. And the Golden Order is somehow involved. What? Our Please. order? Are you sure? That's what I read in the letter from Mortimer to Napoleon. Uh -huh. hmm. This information is important. Yes, Thank you, Louis. What a storm. <laughs> Monsieur de Richet? It would seem we have common interests. <laughs> Could we speak in private, please? Why would you walk out to the edge? Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about their disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. 
He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'or for 200 cannons. It is remarkable. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you ought to speak to my mother. Oh, what a pity. I was hoping you would be up to the challenge. Too bad. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? Oh, Jesus. She reinstate the monarchy, France needs a leader. I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I hear your words and I agree. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Monsieur Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. Ding ding. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> The last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflict.